Hello, Generals, and welcome back to this Thursday edition of Five Star News. I'm Jacob Morris. And I'm Mason Dotson. Today we're going to get you guys started out like we always do with some school announcements and weather. So here's Heritage Happenings with Nathan McCoy and Pierce Monroe. Take it away, guys. Thanks, guys, for an awesome intro. Now, let's jump right into some Thursday announcements. Attention, juniors and seniors, don't forget to buy your prom tickets before the prices go through the roof. They are only $65, but will go up closer to prom. The annual event will be held at Collins Show Commons on April the 23rd at 7. Up next, our Heritage Soccer team will be taking on Pickens here at the Taj. The girls will play at 5, following the boys at 7. Come out and support your team. Tomorrow starts a four-day weekend. The school offices will be open tomorrow for an in-service day. And Monday, the offices will be closed. So, enjoy your extra long weekend. Now, let's get you over to Pierce for your weekend weather forecast. Thanks, Nathan, for this great announcement. Now, on to your weekend weather forecast. Thursday, it will be cloudy with a high of 62 and a low of 40. Friday, it will be cloudy with a high of 68 and a low of 40. And for Saturday, it will remain cloudy and there will be a high of 55 and a low of 22. Now, let's get you back to our anchors for more news. Great job on the announcements, you two. Moving on to the news now, several HHS students we're down in Dalton this Tuesday at a career fair. That's right, Mr. Fair students to be exact. They're down there to see some opportunities that lie ahead of them after they graduate from Heritage. Sounds amazing, Mason. Here's Five Star News reporters Brandon McBriar, Shane Davis, and Noah Crinton with more on the report. All right, so yesterday we took a few students down to Dalton Convention Center for a college and career fair hosted by the um, Dalton uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so the students came down, they kind of were able to see different various businesses that are around the area um, from the Chattanooga Airport to Mohawk to Shaw to different chemical companies as well as the Lyman School over in Dade County. Uh, the students were able to talk to them, kind of get some information about those different schools and businesses so they can possibly look for future jobs uh, within the next couple of years here for them. I know one student made a really close connection to the Lyman School and is looking to apply there this, uh, this summertime. Okay, so the reason I went to the job fair is, well, to look at jobs, obviously. <laughs> I don't really know what I want to do just yet in life, so it, the job fair gave me a few ideas. I just speak to some people from Amazon and another, I want to say it was some kind of aluminum. It was either aluminum, it was some kind of metal company, I think. I'm not entirely sure. It was like, it had to do with planes. I believe the students had a great time. We were able to kind of um, meet some students from other schools as well as kind of enjoy a lunch afterwards and kind of fellowship with each other and also talk about our future plans and stuff. Thanks guys for that report. And are you excited for the upcoming four day weekend? Yes, I cannot wait for that, Mason. I'm sure our staff and students are very excited as well. Here's Five Star News reporters Pinner Allen and Ethan Anderson asking our students what their plans are for the four day weekend. I'm very excited for the long weekend. It's my husband's birthday, so we're going to go out to eat and spend time with his family. Then go to church on Sunday, and on Monday I'll probably do schoolwork. So I'm very excited. Um, over the four-day weekend, I'm going to be going to Chattanooga, downtown Chattanooga, with my friend Caleb. And we're probably just going to skate around while my mom looks at stuff. Um, Probably hang out outside, play video games, and play my guitar. I will probably climb trees and get in the water behind my house. Very excited. Hopefully we'll get, we'll get chicken wings afterwards. I love chicken wings. They're so good. Maybe I'll finally man up and be able to do like some tricks on the skateboard. I want to do a kickflip, but I can't. I am very excited to play video games over the four-day weekend. I'm really excited. I ain't seen Caleb in a month. Actually, no, longer than a month. My first time seeing him in forever. I'm really excited. 
Time for a quick break here now on the show. But stay tuned because after the commercial is sports, Alex and Anderson will get you guys caught up on baseball, tennis, and the upcoming three-point shootout. Stay tuned. Sports is next. Yo, you ready to get destroyed? Pong tournament, five dollars. Sign ups March seventh to March sixteenth. Tournament date March twenty second at lunch. Paying the teachers on the board. It's sports time here on the show. Alex and Anderson with you again, and we'll start off today with baseball. Yes, Alex. Coach Beagle's boys starting up a series with the Southeast Whitfield Raiders last night. How do our guys do? Here's five star sports reporters Evan Wingrove and Brandon Hamilton with the recap. Yeah, last night was great to get our first region win at uh, Edwards Park. Actually went down there and played uh, due to the field conditions at Southeast. But uh, uh, Zach Barrett was on the mound for us, gave us six innings, and Garrison May came in and got the save at the end. Uh, ended up winning two to nothing. Not a lot of offense, but uh, you know made the most of the hits that we had. We ended up about six hits on the night. Uh, last night we played Southeast, and we could have been a little bit better offensively, but defensively we played well. Tonight we're going to take on Southeast, and they're – Pretty tough, but I think we can take the win. Uh, Ken Stafford's continued to swing the bat well, and then uh, I think in the fifth inning, uh, Max Owens got us a solo home run to kind of give us a two nothing lead, and that held up to that game. We won last night two nothing. Pretty good performance. We didn't hit the best. Um, tonight we come back, double header at home, and hopefully we beat them both games and sweep them for the region win. Uh, tonight, we finished out the series with them here at home with a doubleheader. Uh, in the first game, uh, game two, um, uh, Landon Skeen will be going, and in game three, J.J. Hunt will be on the mound for us. So uh, looking forward to getting back home and playing at home, and uh, it will be a salute to service night here. So we'll be in the um, military tribute uniforms tonight. Look forward to it. To tennis now, and both the boys' and girls' teams are dealing with the wet weather as well. True that. Their match with Cedar Town on Tuesday was postponed, and they'll reschedule that one for March 28th. But hopefully we'll be able to get back out on the court today to tangle with Gordon Lee. I hope so. The Trojans are not in our region, but any chance you get to play Gordon Lee is always fun. Here's Evan and Brandon with a quick match preview. Yeah, big match for the uh, boys tennis team later today as we take on Gordon Lee. It's a non-region match, but it is Gordon Lee, so anytime the school gets together with Gordon Lee in any kind of sporting event, we want to beat them. And uh, we've been really good against them in the past several years. Uh, I can't remember the last time actually we've lost to them as a girls team, and uh, I don't think the boys have either. So uh, it'll be a good uh, test for us, though. We hadn't been able to play. We got rained out the other day against Cedartown, and our last match we're coming off of a loss to Cedar, uh, Central Carrollton. So it'll be a good opportunity for the, uh, the guys to get out there, play a match before we get back into region play next week against uh, Pickens County. So I'm looking forward to getting some guys healthy. Tanner, he's not been feeling well. He's been out of the lineup for a little bit. Uh, Caleb Biddle was out yesterday from school, not feeling too good. So we're hoping to get those guys back. So last Thursday we lost to Central Carroll. It was close. It was 3-2. And we were getting ready to go into a match against Cedartown on Tuesday. Got rained out. So we had about a full week to prepare for tomorrow's game, which is against Gordon Lee. And they're considered to be... Not that good. They're not a region match for us. They're, uh, I think, 3A, so we should be able to go over there. And Well, they're going to come to us, actually, and we should be able to take them out with no problem. We're hoping to get a few of our guys back that have been sick uh, this week. Uh, hopefully, they'll be able to get back out there today and take on Gordon Lee. And um, You never want to say it's an easy match, but I think this is after taking on Central Carrollton and playing them right down to the wire, it'll be good for us to get back out there against Gordon Lee, maybe get back into the groove a little bit get our confidence back up as we take on some guys next week in region play. Um, hi, tomorrow the girls tennis team uh, will be playing Gordon Lee High School. I expect it to be a good match. Um, I do expect us to win. I don't know a lot about Gordon Lee because we didn't play them when I was here, so this will be new for me, but I do have high expectations for our girls. Tomorrow we play Gordon Lee, and I think that we're going to take the dub because we're just that good. And... I think it would uh, – Central was actually our worst team to play ever, so I think it will be good the rest of the season. 
to basketball now, and our girls' season ended last week in the Elite A, Alex, but a few of Coach Elkin's players are still making news. Yes, two, in fact. Seniors Gracie Murray and Brooke Matherly were recently named to the Region 7-4A All-Region teams. Well-deserved, in my opinion. These girls have been money the past three seasons for our generals. Here's five-star sports reporters Brody Irvin, Claire Martin, and Charlie Williams with the story. Uh, so Gracie Murray and, and Brooke Matherly uh, both were uh, voted uh, Region 7 4A uh, All-Region team. Um, man, so I think this is three years in a row for Gracie, uh, sophomore, junior, senior year. And Brooke uh, has been, this is her second year in a row, so junior and senior year. Yeah, uh, so um, I made All-Region again this year. I got it last year. and. Um, I think it's pretty cool that me and Gracie got it again. I was really looking forward to it. All the coaches vote on the players, and I'm pretty happy I made it. So I'm really happy I got all region. Um, it's my third time getting it and Brooke's second, and I'm really happy for both of us because we've worked really hard, and we've led our team to the Elite Eight this year, which is a great accomplishment. So I'm really happy for all of us. So um, this is a big deal. You know, it's an honor for both of them to receive this vote from the other coaches. Um, you're obviously not allowed to vote for your own players, so this is a – even bigger deal because the other coaches in the region uh, recognize your uh, contribution and re re recognize um, your ability and uh, and, I, and your importance to your basketball team. So I think this is a big deal for both. And I think you know, to me, uh, two different types of players, uh, both uh, playing a s significant key role on the basketball team. I think both very well deserving, uh, both hardworking individuals come to practice ready to go every day. Uh, I think that um, Gracie has made so many great strides in the right direction leadership-wise. I think we all know that she's an exceptional athlete and, and has been. But this year, I was really proud of the way she stepped up um, as a leader and, and matured a lot uh, in that role and did things we asked her to do. And I think she grew into that more confident as the year went on. And I think she's very key in the reason we made the run late in the season. Uh, Brooke obviously shoots the ball extremely well. Uh, we ran a lot of sets to Brooke to get her shots. Um, and she always you know, rose to the occasion. I think she, she played particularly well down the stretch. Um, but I think about what, where Brooke uh, is different than a lot of other players is that not only does she shoot the ball well, that her demeanor and her acceptance to coaching and, and her, um, just her overall personality uh, it was, was very crucial to having on the team uh, to keep the, the mood upbeat and to kind of keep everybody positive. And, and um, couldn't be more proud of her and, and, and what she's accomplished in the two years I've been here. So, yeah, so great, great job by both. We're all super proud of, of both of them. And I think moving forward, um, they're going to be really difficult to replace uh, next year. Congrats, girls. We're going to miss both of you on the court. Well, Alex, you might see them on the Taj floor one more time after all. And how's that, Anderson? Well, if you're smart, you'll ask one of them to be your partner in the annual three-point shootout that's coming up. Mm, that might not be a bad idea. Sure, we'd like to end the reign of Coach Lawless and Coach Height. Yeah, me too. For more information on this year's tourney, here's your very own Ian Gonzalez, Benji Bevel, and Andrew Amick. Three-point shootout is we're in the process right now of uh, getting uh, applicants turned, get, getting their form turned in. And, uh, you know, we want to have 40, 50 teams if we can. So if you can shoot at all, you think you can shoot three-pointers, sign up. It's only $2 a team, $1 a person. So I know y'all can come up with a dollar. I'm not scared of losing. If I lose, I lose. But most of all, I think a lot of people need to be scared because I'm on a hot streak, I will win. Do what I do every day, get outside when I get home, practice basically like four hours, basically shooting around just from the three-point line, maybe like deep. Just do what I'd normally do to practice. So the three-point shootout's coming up again this semester. Me and my teammate went pretty far last time, but we didn't win, but we've been practicing and we're, we're coming for the competition, especially Lawless and Hyde if they play. Next week, we will cut off the deadline for it. will be a deadline next week sometime for uh, letting teams sign up. But, you know, if you haven't signed up and you want to, uh, come see us in the gym. We'll have the app, the forms uh, at lunch, auxiliary gym. So come sign up. Thanks for sports, you guys. Now moving on to some entertainment. We're going to start you guys out with HHS Cool Rides. I thought it was just HHS Rides. 
Well, the guys made an executive decision to change it as they thought it would make it uh, cooler. That's just cringy. Why would they do that? Well, I'm not 100% sure. Go ahead and take it away, guys. This is my car that I've been driving lately. It's a Honda Accord Sport. Um, it's really not my car, it's my dad's car, but I mean, it's good on gas. I get like 26 miles a gallon, and that's a lot better than the other car I've been driving. It's uh, 12 miles a gallon. So, I mean, with gas, price, it's, gas prices skyrocketing, I thought it was a great idea to start driving this guy. Okay, so this is my car. It's a BMW X1. It's white. Um, I bought this car about two years ago. Um, the backstory behind it is that I bought it from some guy. He bought it from a dealership and he never used it, so I bought it. And I love it. And my favorite thing about it is that it goes really fast because I like driving fast. And yeah, it's everything about my car. <laughs> Pretty cool, I, I guess. I want to stop with the original name. Th me too, but we're going to go ahead and send you guys over to a different segment. Oh boy, what is it? We're going to get you guys over to that second installment of Britain and Bedwell's Belly Review. I love that segment. Where are they reviewing today? Uh, it looks like they're going to the Applebee's in Fordo. Let's see how they review it. I'm Anderson Britton. And I'm Alexander Bedwell. And this is episode two of Bedwell and Britton's Belly Review. And today, we're going to be reviewing... Applebee's. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so today we got Applebee's for you guys. Uh, Applebee's is a pretty good restaurant, you know. Uh, can get up there in price sometimes, but after 10, they got half price apps, and those barbecue boneless wings are pretty freaking good. Uh, the Bees has a lot to offer. Pretty good service. So, Applebee's, it's always a good post game meal. There's always something that you can eat there. They have wings, quesadillas, burgers, pretty much anything you want you can get at Applebee's. The pricing, I mean, it can get up there a little bit. It can range anywhere from about $8, depending on what time you go, uh, to about $15. Uh, like I said, price can get up there sometimes, but the food quality, I'd probably give about an 8 out of 10. Price, I'd probably give a 6.5 out of 10. Service, give me a 9 out of 10. So overall... I would recommend Applebee's to any of you guys. Um, the waiters and waitresses are always super nice and very friendly. You can't really complain about that. The service is always good. And I would highly recommend Applebee's. On a rating scale of 1 to 10, I would give the service a 10 out of 10. The food quality, probably about an 8 out of 10, especially those boneless wings. Man, they are good. That honey barbecue boneless wings, you got to get those with a side of fries. Thanks for tuning in of episode two of Bedwell and Britain's Belly Review. Until next time, eaters. <clears throat>Awesome review, you two, and with that, we'll wrap up this Thursday edition of Five Star News. That's right, but we'll be back next Wednesday with a brand new report. So until then, stay classy, Heritage. Heritage.